Okay, let me paint a picture for you. It's the late 1980s. You're wearing your leg warmers and your aerobics gear because that's what everyone wore in the 1980s. The room is illuminated by beautiful neon lights of every color. You turn on your giant pink television set and you are treated to the beautiful heartbreaking story of a nerd played by one of the Carradines, Robert, David, I don't know, but this time he's not getting revenge. He's getting a makeover from 80s queen herself, Suzanne Summers. And this beautiful thing that you're watching on your television set is like My Fair Lady and Pygmalion rolled into one. Slightly more problematic than both of them, but some, somehow this, uh, this piece of garbage is one of the most important things to ever happen to the Walt Disney Company. I will explain. But first, welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And before we get things started for today's video, I have one very important thing to say. Happy birthday, Minnie. Yes, yes, I know it's Mickey Mouse's birthday too, but you know what? Mickey gets all the attention and today is also Minnie Mouse's birthday. Or is it? Fun fact, November 18th is widely considered to be Mickey and Minnie's birthday, but there are at least two other dates that that birthday could possibly be. I personally think it's back in May, but I already did an entire video about this exact subject at this time last year. Please, after you watch this video, go watch that one. Nobody did, and it's one of my favorites. Please, please watch that video. Anyway, moving on. In honor of her 93rd birthday, today's video is all about the legacy that is Minnie Mouse. Minnie made her on-screen debut right alongside Mickey in 1928 in the shorts Plain Crazy as well as Steamboat Willie. Over the last 93 years, she's had numerous on-screen appearances and she's developed this irreplaceable presence in the parks. But out of all the credits on her resume, there is one that I would argue is the most important and not only to Minnie, but to the Walt Disney Company as a whole. And I am of course referring to Totally Mini. Totally Mini is a television special that aired on NBC in 1988. Now, I remember watching it as a kid in the 90s as a rerun. I'm not that old. And it's about a down on his luck nerd played by Robert Carradine, who's essentially like unofficially reprising his role from Revenge of the Nerds. So he goes to the Minnie Mouse Center for the totally unhip and he learns how to be cool from Minnie Mouse. It's basically Pygmalion or My Fair Lady, but with a mouse in the 80s. And I kid you not, this is the most 1980s thing ever. Aside from Robert Carradine playing a nerd, you have Suzanne Summers. Elton John does a duet with Minnie Mouse. There's a ton of neon. I mean, like looking at this TV special now, is it fun? Absolutely. Is it good? Absolutely not. Is it one of the most historically important and significant things to ever happen to the Walt Disney Company? 100%. And here's why. Totally Mini wasn't just about the television special. Totally Mini was a brand unto itself that was very intentionally orchestrated by Disney. So two or three years before the special aired, there was a Totally Mini album. There was a Totally Mini parade at Disneyland. Disney was really pushing Minnie Mouse as the face of 1980s Disney culture. Now, I couldn't find much information on why this Minnie Mouse renaissance was happening because let's be honest, it wasn't on the Wikipedia page and that's where like 95% of my research comes from, but I have my suspicions. And when it comes to Disney, there's always two answers to every question. There's the onstage answer, the answer that like maintains all the Disney magic, and the offstage answer, the one that's more like JPEG oriented, the one that's just the cold hard facts. So. The onstage answer about this totally mini revolution, the answer that Disney seems to provide, is that they just felt like it was time for Minnie to have a renaissance, for Minnie to get the attention she deserved. And I am all here for that 100%. You go, Minnie Mouse. But let's be honest. When you look at the aesthetic and the culture that was really trending in the 1980s, if Disney wanted to capitalize on that, they needed a female character at the center of their marketing. When you look at the characters that they had in their arsenal, Minnie Mouse was the closest to Mickey Mouse, who was already the face of the Disney Corporation. I mean, Minnie and Mickey basically have the same face. You just throw on eyelashes and a bow and then it's Minnie. So 
it made sense. But whatever the logic, the important thing is that in creating Totally Mini, it brought Disney, Rusi Taylor. <sighs> okay, we just need to, we just, we need to take a moment to gush over Rusi Taylor. And when I say we need to take a moment, it's me letting you know that that's what the rest of this video is going to be. We love Rusi. Rusi Taylor was the official voice of Minnie Mouse from 1986 through to her death in 2019, but she didn't just voice Minnie. Rusi Taylor gave her voice to some of the most iconic characters, like animated characters, of all time. So for Disney, she also did Huey, Dewey, and Louie. I think she was also Webby in the DuckTales universe. For The Simpsons, she was Sherry and Terry. She was also Martin Prince. Soon I'll be queen of summertime. I mean, like, Rusi Taylor had to be one of the most talented voiceover actors ever. But this is why I think her work with Minnie Mouse was so important. Because I personally believe that she created the character of Minnie that we know and love today. Now, yes, Minnie has been around for the same amount of time as Mickey Mouse, but she has not had the same career. Because this is the thing. Mickey Mouse has been a sacred character from day one. It's widely accepted that Mickey is Walt's alter ego. So Mickey possesses all of the hope and imagination and optimism that Walt possessed, or at least that history would have us believe that Walt possessed. And Mickey's legacy goes all the way back to Walt Disney. So as I'm sure most of us already know, Walt Disney was the original voice of Mickey Mouse. He eventually handpicked sound effect artist Jimmy McDonald to take over for him, who in turn selected and trained the third official voice of Mickey, Wayne Allwine. And there's this legendary piece of advice that seems to be passed down from Mickey voice to Mickey voice, which is... Just remember, kid, you're only filling in for the boss. The boss being Walt Disney. So there's always been a lot riding on Mickey, not only as the face of the company, but also as a tribute to Walt himself. And over the years, Mickey's character has naturally grown and evolved with every on-screen appearance and with every new actor taking over as his voice. Minnie Mouse, however, did not have the same luxury. Before Totally Minnie premiered, Minnie was really just a side character, a cameo character. I'd go as far as to say an afterthought. In fact, shortly after Totally Minnie came out, the Boston Globe published an article about Minnie Mouse and stated that if you took all of Minnie's on-screen appearances since her creation and put them together, it would amount to less than five minutes of runtime and be little more than a fashion show. Now, first off, I just want to say that Minnie Mouse is a fashion icon, so I don't think that's an insult. But also, at the time, they weren't totally wrong. <laughs> Minnie started out as a 1930s animated sight gag, just like Mickey. But then as Mickey's popularity started to rise, Minnie kind of became a device to help tell Mickey's stories. So she was either the damsel in distress that Mickey had to save, or she was providing some kind of conflict that fueled whatever adventure Mickey was gonna have. And then as Donald Goofy and Pluto became more popular, Minnie just started to fade into the background. And it got to the point where Minnie didn't talk for over 30 years. When you watch Mickey's Christmas Carol, Minnie is silent for the entire thing because by that time, the animators didn't even know if Minnie was allowed to talk. And that was apparently the catalyst behind Disney deciding that Minnie had to have a renaissance. So that's when they put out the casting call and that's when they found Rootsie Taylor. So coming into the role, Rusi did not have that much to work with. Yes, Minnie had spoken in the past, at this point, like 35-ish years in the past. And all of the different actresses who had previously voiced Minnie had a similar sound to them, but they also had very different character traits and in some cases, different accents. Rusi somehow managed to land on a sound that paid tribute to all of those voice actresses who had come before her. But the real magic just came from how good Rusi was as an actor. There is this brilliant clip that I love so much where Rusi is reflecting on her audition for Minnie, where she apparently just spontaneously went into the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet as Minnie Mouse. Oh, thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Oh, else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Oh, fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain, deny would I have spoke, but farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? <laughs> well, of course thou dost. Oh. 
And just aside from that being a genuinely brilliant Shakespearean performance for reasons that I won't get into right now, but I could nerd out about for a long time. When you hear that, you just hear all of the personality traits that we now associate with Minnie Mouse. You know, her sweetness, her openness, her heart, her saucy, melodramatic spirit. Rusi was crafting this unique personality for Minnie Mouse that went beyond the squeaky female mouse voice that everyone knew belonged to Minnie. Now Minnie had a character. And this is why I think Rusi is so phenomenal, because she took a character that had been silent for over three decades and just crafted this distinct personality that automatically caught Minnie up with Mickey. Just like Mickey, she became a character who could suddenly wear multiple hats, who could play multiple different roles, and who could be an independent ambassador for Disney. And it's worth noting that up until her death, Rusi was the exclusive voice of Minnie Mouse. And I know that you might think that that's obvious or a given. You probably just assume, like I did, that once someone is the voice of a Disney character, they are the voice. But as it turns out, nope because the characters need to have different vocal qualities pending on if they're appearing at a live event in a theme park or in a TV show or in a movie. Each type of appearance requires a slightly different skill set that not necessarily every actor possesses. Perfect example, there are currently two official voices for Mickey Mouse. So first we have Brett Iwin. Brett is kind of the more traditional Mickey Mouse voice. He's the one that voices Mickey at the parks, in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. He's just kind of, yeah, the more traditional Mickey Mouse voice. Hi, Mr. Troll. Um, well, we brought you a special treat. But then there's also Christian Metopoulos, who, shout out to a Canadian actor voicing Mickey Mouse, making us fellow Canadians proud. But Chris voices Mickey in the Mickey Mouse shorts, which requires Mickey to have a bit more of a comedic, edgier sound to him. Rusi was unique because it wasn't just that she could do the voice, she had a strong enough grasp on the character and she was so skilled as an actor that she was able to like manipulate that voice to cater to whatever thing Minnie Mouse was appearing in, whether it was Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I think it's time for a mouse cartoon. Or if she was doing that more edgy comedic sound for the Mickey Mouse shorts. Forget the VIP experience. Rusi Taylor could do it all. And the other amazing thing about Rusi as Minnie is that she ended up marrying Wayne Allwine, the voice of Mickey. It is possibly the sweetest Disney love story ever. And I think it had an undeniable effect on the characters. Mickey and Minnie have always been a couple on paper, but the work that Wayne and Rusi did together, I mean, it is, it's beautiful. I mean, when you hear the two of them working together, you really feel the love between Mickey and Minnie in a way that felt genuine. I would say for the first time in the history of those two characters. It is so hard for me to imagine a time when Minnie didn't have a strong presence in Disney entertainment. For as long as I can remember, Minnie has always been just as important and just as iconic as Mickey and the two of them have always been the ultimate Disney power couple. And considering that I grew up in the 1990s, I think that just goes to show that the totally mini renaissance worked. You know, Mickey has had so many actors that shaped him into the character that we know today, but Rusi, Rusi was totally mini. Anyway, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, what is your favorite Minnie Mouse appearance or outfit? Because again, she's a fashion icon and we love her for it. And if you wanna be the first to know when I release more videos about Disney history, Mickey, Minnie, Disney, Shakespeare, Funko Pops, sometimes cats, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. If you haven't subscribed already, it is super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and that's the T cup for one. Go away.